The Premier League encounter this weekend at Stamford Bridge is going to be quite important. The game that is going to happen at Stamford Bridge is going to be a very huge game. The champions are going to visit Stamford Bridge and we expect the tactical clash between Chelsea and Manchester City this Sunday to be quite exciting. Though Manchester City are the finished article and are the benchmark, Chelsea are trying to build a project to try at least to catch up with Manchester City. So, Mauricio Pochettino and Pep Guardiola have had encounters throughout the past. But Pochettino has managed to win some games against Pep, though he's the manager who Pep has had most victory against. Pochettino and Pep have encountered each other from Espanyol to, Bas to uh, Espanyol versus Barcelona all the way to Tottenham Hotspur, PSG, and now they are meeting at Chelsea. So Maurizio Pochettino, who has suffered massive defeats against Pep, will be looking to try to register a win and return Chelsea's home form back. So this is my lineup for this game. I've decided to bring in Badiashile for Disasi because I think Badiashile is more comfortable than Disasi. I've decided to start Colwell ahead of Kukurea because I need height in the team otherwise i've retained the lineup as it was we need height against this dominant manchester city team on the other side i expect pep guardiola to also start with this lineup uh, against chelsea I expect alvarez doku haaland and phil foden to lead the line with bernardo silva and rodri playing in midfield uh, John Stones, Diaz, uh, Vadiol and Walker will also start and maybe Akanji can come in place for either of the four defenders. Before we start our analysis, do not forget to like, share and subscribe. So what do we expect from Manchester City? What makes Manchester City so strong? And we are going to see how we expect Pep to try to play. So we know very well that Manchester City like to build play from the back. This is by inviting opponents high up the pitch. This is aided by their wingers starting wide and their two number eights pushing forward. Uh, the main aim here is that you need to understand that Pep Guardiola pushes uh, John Stones in midfield and uses Ederson as an extra centre back so that he can form the six man build up shape that is famed for Brighton Hovalbion. The main aim is to drag Chelsea players out of position mainly through creating side overloads. These side overloads enables Manchester City to form these boxes down the side and enable them to easily play through Chelsea. The main aim of Manchester City is to drag Chelsea midfielders out of position so that they can be able to dominate the central part of the pitch. Now. Chelsea Football Club will luckily uh, like to press in a 4-2-3-1 system, but if Chelsea decide to go man-to-man -man against Ederson and Diaz, then immediately they go a man down in the pressing game. And this will be aided since Manchester City now will have an extra man during build-up. And a player who we expect to be doing these things is Bernardo Silva. Now, Manchester City in this position can uh, utilize side overloads and immediately launch quick switches of play down the left-hand channel for Vardial to play in Jeremy Doku, who has been in scintillating form. Actually, the last game he made close to four assists. Now, I'm showing you how Manchester City easily beats its opponents. So you can see that uh, Chelsea might decide to use Caicedo and Enzo to sit on the two number eights. But again now Rodri can be free to receive the ball in position and the dropping in Bernardo Silva can also create a lot of problems for Chelsea. With John Stones also pushing in midfield, Manchester City can overload the midfield with as many as six players. So. Most teams decide just to let Manchester City uh, build from the back uh, qu quickly enough and uh, if you decide to sit in a mid-block, Pep Guardiola is still not afraid to 
push Ederson high up the pitch to act as a third center back. Especially we saw this when Manchester City were playing against Arsenal. The main aim is to have the center back so wide that this drags out opposition players who are pressing and enables to create a passing lane in midfield where Rodri can receive the ball and immediately play in his defenders. The dynamism and the movement of Manchester City players will be quite crucial in trying to limit Chelsea's press. Also, Chelsea need to understand that Bernardo Silva will be playing a free role on the team. His ability to shift from his forward line, drop deep, receive the ball, play in Rodri and play all manner of positions on the pitch will be a reason and a key problem for Mauricio Pochettino to try to fix. Now, in progressive phases of play, uh, what we usually see with Pep Guardiola when he starts John Stones is that Stones comes in midfield and either Vadiola and Akanji or Vadiola and Walker tuck in to form a back three system. The midfield double pivot stays staggered with Rodri being the deepest and John Stones pushing slightly further forward. <coughs> Stones in this position can either decide in some instances, Pep might decide to push Walker further up the pitch and Stones to drop as a third center back. This might see Bernardo Silva dropping in midfield to play alongside Rodri, since Foden likes. So let's uh, let's look at what Chelsea will do, and we want to see how Chelsea can beat Manchester City. So the first aspect is two ball playing center backs and I have picked Padia Schiele and Thiago Silva. They will be very important especially against the Manchester City high press. The second player that I have picked for this position is called Palma. His ability to pick up spaces in between the lines and in front of the defense will be most crucial in helping Chelsea break down Manchester City or beat their press. So. Manchester City like to draw opponents high up the pitch by trying to build from the back. So Chelsea can allow Manchester City to escape their first line of pressure. And then Jackson can now start to engage the press. The main aim is to have as many as five players from Chelsea by having their wingers narrow so that they can prevent Manchester City's central progression. The main aim is to force Manchester City wide where they can trust their fullbacks in Rich James and Levi Colwell to take on both Doku and Phil Foden. I've preferred Colwell because Manchester City have a lot of tall players. Now, we've seen Pep Guardiola at times decide to push Ederson high up the pitch so that they can form a wide back three kind of system. So Caicedo and Enzo should focus on the two players in between the lines. And in this case, Chelsea can have their wingers narrow by having a 4-2-3-1 press. The main aim is to have aggressive fullbacks who are willing to step out of the line to go and try to counter Manchester City down the wide areas. Now, since most of the time Manchester City will be able to beat this Chelsea's press and arrange themselves in their default 4-3-4-3 kind of system with Rodri either playing slightly deeper with the John Stones pushing ahead of him. The main aim that Chelsea should do is that if Chelsea decide to press with the phone through, then Manchester City will easily build through them. But if Chelsea employ a 4-4-1-1 with Gallagher picking one pivot and Jackson sitting on the other, this now will enable will force Manchester City to push their centre back stones out of the midfield and come to start building to help Ruben Diaz build up play. So in some instances you will find Guardiola will be trying to push Bernardo Silva out so that he can draw in a centre back out of position. So Enzo should be aggressive and Chelsea centre backs should not be afraid to go 1v1 in the back. Chelsea should be quite uh, clear in intercepting the ball especially in the midfield area and immediately launching counter attacks. They must be quite ruthless and effective in these attacks and only Rhys James should be the one being tasked to advance down the right channel. And Rhys James will be quite important since he's quite an attacking threat and can cross the ball for his players. Now, we know very well the way Manchester City press, they like to press in a 4-1-1-4 system. 
having two players pressing. So having two center backs who are capable to receive the ball under pressure in Badiashile and Thiago Silva will be quite important since Sanchez is not quite good on the ball. So you spread the center back so wide, play the ball to Thiago Silva to draw in Haaland and now you have Cole Palmer dropping deep to try to create a 2v1 overload against Doku with Conor Gallagher pinning uh, Vardiol high up the pitch. Chris James can either try to use his incredible uh, dribbling ability to beat his presser or try to push the ball in field. And this will, <coughs> this will be quite important since if Rodri now pushes up to try to cover Cole Palmer, then Moises Caicedo is free to receive the ball at the edge of the box and advance the ball forward where they can create an overload against Rodri. And now Chelsea can have as many players running at Manchester City's backline. Now, in some instances, uh, in times of play, Chelsea might have possession spells. And if they decide to build with two center backs, Guardiola will beat them since he will have his narrow front four pressing the entire Chelsea back four. So in this case, this is where you'll find my tactic where I've employed where Chelsea should push to a pseudo back three with Rhys James pushing high and wide and playing almost as a winger and Gallagher and Palmer playing in between the lines. This will be aided with the Colwell starting as a third centre back. Again, Manchester City now will commit to press Chelsea all three centre backs with Foden pushing forward. So Enzo Fernandez can push forward so that Chelsea can create this diamond in midfield and stop Manchester and overload Manchester City in the high up areas. And Enzo can be dropping, picking up pockets of space to receive the ball directly from his centre backs. And now Chelsea will have numerical overloads against Manchester City's attack. So this game is going to be quite tactical with Pep Guardiola having majority of the wins against Maurizio Pochettino. This game will be proving to be quite pivotal but for Chelsea who will be angling to try to beat this strong Manchester City side. This game is not a walk in the park for Chelsea since they are going to meet the treble winners, a team that has been established and molded under the image of Pep Guardiola. Now, uh, Mauricio Pochettino needs to be very on point with his substitutions, with his lineup, and the way his team played. If they play the way they played against Spurs in the first half, Chelsea will be shredded by Manchester City. And therefore, Chelsea need to be very on point and very disciplined in this game. So, on the other hand, uh, the probability of Manchester City winning this game is high, but Mauricio Pochettino needs this win, especially to get confidence back to his young squad. Give us your prediction of this game. And if you enjoyed this video, do not forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. And if you've watched till the end of this video, I'd like to thank you for watching.